Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And stay standing. We are having a different order of service today. Obviously, with all the special events, we're going to go straight into a hymn that will lead into communion. So, as we end this song, I would ask that our servers come down front. Obviously not up here. You might trip and fall against a communion table. But down front, this song is a recording of the old hymn, If We Never Meet Again. And it's got a picture of Drennan in the back. And I just want you to know that it's got over 200,000 views on YouTube. Someone put it out there. 300,000. Oh, I feel like I'm at an auction. So there's a little picture of Drennan Church taken from the very back. And somehow that hymn is popular enough that you're going to see that many views of our chapel on YouTube. So let's sing together our communion and offering hymn, If We Never Meet Again. And I hope it works. Let's see here. Now we've got our computer has to do something funny. And I think it's chosen right now for that funny time. Let's see.
like man. Let's stand for the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. not for our little band of followers here, but for your kingdom. We thank you for the, the supper that we've eaten together today. Now bless us as we move further into our service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. We have a prayer list always available. And I hope you got a paper as you walked in. People to pray for this week. And I would ask if folks have a name that they want brought up today either from the list or not on the list, so we can pray for them today. Chris. Yes, uh, pray for Kathy Hawkins, uh, my mom's sister, my aunt. She's a uh, bad with her right now. She's pretty mad as far as she's on here, so pray for her. Shoulder surgery in the morning. It is here. Pat's been on our list a little while. Pray that she has a successful surgery. For sure. Amanda. Cancer out, but now we need to get things right. And say, who else? Harriet. Just continue to pray for Harold. They are going to say, he would be having another chemo treatment. It's always rough, as you know, that's Brenda is back here. Yeah, and, and many of us in this room know how that works. And uh, I know they're watching today. Yeah. Yeah. Folks from Ohio. Rache, did I see your hand up? Yeah. Uh, my brother, Jay Newcomb. Jay Newcomb? Yeah. He's been gathering um, like trepidation and homelessness for a while. And uh, any help I offer, I don't want to hear nothing out of yourself. And where's he live? He lives in Maria. Yeah. Well, I think. So Rache's brother struggling with life issues right now and not listening to help, loving help from family. Andrea. Project for the family abroad TJ.
Well, that's a, a victory. We have folks in this room who tell you chemo stinks right now. Hear you? Yeah, Frankie is back, first time since her surgery, wanted to be here, big event, so welcome home. And at the same time, we keep your clapping going because we know that this is the week Brenda gets her treatment, last Wednesday, and often kicks her tail, but she's here. Because one of her babies, and several of her babies are having something special today. So it's a good day. Uh, one I got online, I got message last night. Um, Donnie Cox, who's the dad of one of our members, Kenzie Cox, and her sister Emily. <laughs> Kenzie has recently moved to Tennessee, but Donnie here back at home has got congestive heart failure, and he's a young man, and that's no good. And Emily said to me yesterday through the message, it's not going well at all, and uh, asked for prayers for us today. So Donnie Cox and Harriet. Keep Eleanor and Helen. Right. Helen has been struggling to foot, and I don't know if Alan knows anymore about Helen's foot. It's back same. They're still dressing it. Well, and in talking with uh, Kadita this morning, we don't have any newer updates about Eleanor either. It's been the waiting game of waiting games. And we talked to her uh, two weeks ago, Friday, and still the same. No new info. Any others today? Let's go into a time of prayer quietly, and I'll close this with corporate prayer. And Lord, we pray today, so many on this list, uh, and pray for Clyde Loudon, good news, and then a setback for Sarah Jeffries, who has been going through a lot, but has a, a bit of a praise there without having to do chemo. For Harold Barton going through it right now. For uh, Kathy Hawkins struggling right now through this <coughs> virus. For Jay Newcomb dealing with life. Donnie Cox with a new diagnosis, congestive heart failure. And Pat Smith with her surgery coming up. Pauling bats, a loss of yet another son, another child. For Eleanor Sharp and sister <laughs> Helen Harden, both going through it at home right now. And for the family of T.J. McLaughlin, grandfather of our member here, Victor, and also lifelong friends with the whole family here. We'll be with all those in need. All the unspoken requests to be with those that are in our church family right now that are traveling. We have at least three families I can think of in my heart right now that are traveling. Uh, some far out of state. Be with them. Lord, we ask for your blessings on today with uh, not only our worship, but especially with our, our baptisms. It's in Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen. Amen. The celebrations and announcements today we do have in the last week of July. Our calendar, we'll have a new calendar next week about August, and we do have um, at least one birthday not in the house today. Amber Fuchs, our, our missionary through crew, her birthday is this coming weekend on the 31st. Do we have anybody that's here today that has birthday at the end of July? Oh, we, we sung at him the other day, for sure. And we'll embarrass him more today as the day goes on. Uh, Remember that we are updating our church directory. Harriet has the clipboard of it up front. I've already, uh, a couple of families have filled that out once by your feet, I think, dear. Uh, one last week and one today. If you are not in our church directory but would like to, we'll just have it uh, and go ahead and pass it around. If anybody needs it to see it and get into the directory, we'd love to have you put in there. If the, you consider this your church home, Get your information on one of the blank sheets in the back so we can have you in that. We'll publish that within the next month, hopefully. All right, we do have an anniversary this week, don't we? Cindy? 
You're heavy. Uh, there were a lot of questions since we haven't seen in a while if he is still uh, around or if you have done something illegal. But we have confirmed, we think, that he is. Uh, he is, and he was so excited about our anniversary this morning, he slept. Oh. <laughs> Sounds like many of the men in this church, right? But how many years have y'all been married? 38. It will be 38 on Wednesday, right? Yeah, we weren't supposed to make it to one. <laughs> Well, you've crossed that threshold a time or two. So we're going to sing happy anniversary, Cindy and John, okay? Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, Cindy and John. Happy anniversary to you. Many, many more. More than 38. Because of that, we are celebrating their anniversary on Wednesday by having our Bible study. That's not the reason we're having it, but I do want to go into the announcements now. We've got the coming soon here, and you got pictures up top. This Wednesday, we are going to discuss the Minor Prophet book of Habakkuk, chapter 1. So between now and Wednesday, please open up your Bible and go to the little thin books at the end of the Old Testament and find Habakkuk. Sounds like something you'd say after you sneeze. But it's important stuff. Read chapter 1, and we will discuss just chapter 1 Wednesday. We'll have a potluck meal at 6, and discussion around 6.30. For those of you all that don't normally come for the meal, come on for the discussion. We've got softball games this week, and we have volunteers for the concession stand, don't we? Yes, we do. Me and Cindy. You and Cindy, tomorrow night, right? We've got games Monday and Thursday, and a lot of you have been coming. Keep coming to it. The schedule's in here. It's not updated all the way. We had to print these before. Our second victory, we beat Newcastle Baptist Thursday night. Team's doing well. Um, anything about the Shaker Village trip here? Yes. Those that signed up, you know who you are. 14 of us uh, will be leaving from uh, the baby house at 10 o'clock Saturday morning, and we'll carpool and uh, be in the Absolutely. Uh, that's this Saturday and then Sunday. We have another musical. Go ahead, Mary. So do not put any money on the table. If you have not paid anything extra for a gratuity, it comes here. Because I had to pay for all of it. At first they said it would just be the meal and the tax. Now they're saying, uh, once I got on there, that they had to have 20% gratuity. So don't put any money on the table. It's all it's mandatory. mandatory. <laughs> yes, mandatory tips in advance. So the service may be terrible, but they already earned their key. So there you go. Let's hope the service isn't terrible. Let's hope the food's not terrible, too. But it's good. It'll be a good day. All right, we're saying that next Sunday we have another musical guest. We've had folks calling us right and left, and I've taken some and I've declined some. But Alvarado Road Show is coming next week. Come for that, and we'll do a love offering for Clive and a or Cleve and AJ, too. Um, they are a fun group. They're the ones, if you don't remember, that, that like to make fun of our son. So that's one of their greatest attributes. And uh, we enjoy that. I don't know if JR does. He's smiling, so he must. But good. The Sunday after that, August 8th, we're having a board meeting right after worship. So August 8th, stay after. We're just a regular quarterly board meeting. Lots of other stuff down the line, and we'll keep that Mention as it gets closer, one thing, the Emmaus walks are coming up in the fall. I have applications. I know some of you are hoping to go on that. Please do. Um, it's time. Time to have them again. And some of you were going to go on it before. Things flipped over last year. And please come back and attend it this time. If you want any more information about it, ask me or any other Emmaus member in the building, and we will be hounding you. I mean, we'll give you more information as it comes closer. All right. Now, um, in the change in the format today, you see if you have the paper, the bulletin, I'm going to be talking on Jesus' baptism a moment because we are having baptisms. And it's time. Before I do start on that, though, I want to make a presentation, of course. We have to equip our saints with what they need, and that does include a Holy Bible and a commemorative uh, certificate. Now, last Sunday... You know that Cody came down the aisle. His birthday week, he was excited. Hadn't been back in worship for a while with everything that's happened. Came down the aisle, and he and Felina and baby Clark are going to get wet today. 
And that's a new one for me with the baby, and I love it. Then Wednesday night, we came to the church, and Kathy Walling said, I'm going to go in that water, too. I went in the water a long time ago, previous millennium, in fact. And I, a lot has happened since then. I need to go back in. So I'm going to, we want to equip these folks. So right now, I have a certificate of baptism. This is a, kind of an advanced copy because you won't be dipped for about another hour or an hour and 15 minutes. So this is for Kathy and also a Bible for her, a study Bible. So Kathy, come on up here. Stay up here too. And stay up here with your stuff. Certificate of baptism for today. And then with the family, some cool stuff here. I didn't know how well Clark could read at this point, uh, he's very sharp. And since he's related to a lot of people in this room, like, that's right, he's sharp. Don't mess with him. But we have certificates for for um, Cody and Felina and Clark with the membership of the church and also with the baptisms and the christening that we will have for them. Plus, I've got study Bibles for the adults and what's called Baby's First Bible. That's technically for Clark, but I know Cody will want to read it too. Uh, so if you could, family, come on up here with the baby, and we'll honor you all and stand here with Kathy, too. And let's clap for them. Here's your all's paperwork. And this is Alina's Bible. It's a house. And here's Cody's Bible. You, you better, you might have to hold this one. There's Clark's. And his is inscribed inside there. So we've got his little thing in there too. So let's pray over these folks right now. Okay. What do we pray for today? And decisions. In the case of Kathy, a rededication. And with Felina and Cody and Clark. Uh, a new commitment. Part of the church family and commit to that and go into the water. For Cody the first time to be baptized. And for Mommy and Daddy, Felina and Cody to make a promise about Clark. The way to raise him. And that promise extends to all of us. That we have to love on baby Clark like we do with Wesley and Cobra May. And our bigger kids, Cambry and Brandon, and Victor, and Addie and Casey, and even on the way up to, to Gabe and Trace and to Taylor and all of them, all of them, so many. Lord, let us dedicate ourselves to raising a church family from babies to adults. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. 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 All right, we're going to talk about baptism a bit. You all can be seated. Scripture I wanted to share, you know, it would be really easy for me just to go into the scriptures that talk about um, Jesus' baptism, specifically him going into the water with John the Baptist, the dove, God saying he's well pleased. But I wanted to go a little bit hardball with that today. And so I am. The scripture I'm going to share today is from Mark chapter 10, 35 through 40. I'm not going to go long because we're going to go into Tim giving us the word and song in just a moment. But Here's how this one reads, and I've got an ancient picture there of Jesus and his preparation for the ministry, being ministered to by angels as well. The scripture says, Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, also known as the sons of thunder, came to him. I'm going to read this with a little bit of swag. Teacher, they said, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. What do you want me to do for you? He asked. They replied, Well, let one of us sit at your right and the other at your left in your glory. You don't know what you are asking, Jesus said. Can you drink the cup I drink or be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with? We can, they answered. Jesus said to them, You will drink the cup I drink and be baptized with the baptism 
I'm baptized with. But to sit at my right or left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom they've been prepared. Now James and John, they were in the inner circle with Jesus. They were trusted companions, disciples that were with him through thick and thin. John, known as the disciple Jesus loved, he and his brother James, the sons of thunder, they were important disciples in the whole scheme of things. But there they were, acting extremely human, just like us. Now you might think, well, they're disciples. You know, they're saints. They're, they're big time. They're in the Bible. But the way they act, Right there. Let me tell you, Jesus, while you're here, I want to sit on your right. My brother wants to sit on your left. We want you to do whatever we ask. You got it? Now, how often do we act like that with Jesus as well? Now, they had no right to act that way. But my goodness, they were the disciples. You would think if anybody had the right to get a little swagger, a little shimmy when they talked, it would be them. But no, no, no. But yet we do. And I will tell you right now that we do so much of just playing church that that's exactly what they were doing. This church has been open for at least 159 years. And we've probably played at church more than we've been to church during those 159. When we have new commitments today from a baby up to adults, that is on us. How many times have I told you from standing right here that if we baptize someone in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, that is not the finish line. That is the starting gun right there. And it is not simply on the immediate family. And it's not simply on the preacher or the elders or the Sunday school teachers to make sure we're all square with that. It's on every single one of us. When Cody and Felina are making that commitment today for Clark, it's not just them. It's all of us. And I tell you what, it's a lot of fun right now that within just a few feet of me, we've got three babies. Seven months, seven months, two months. We are blessed. My goodness. We also have 91 in the room. We've got from two months to 91 years. We got the gamut. We've got to make sure we nurture 91. We've got to make sure we nurture two months. So that we don't walk around and say, Jesus, guess what? I've decided I'm going to sit on your right and my wife's going to sit on your left because we are the family that is the most giving in this church. We're here every time the door is open, preacher, and you know it. I'm the holiest. Mm. I'm so proud of myself. Let me just humble brag for a moment. No. No. So as we go down to the creek in a little while, even though we're not all going in the water, and that's why I'm dressed so ridiculously today, I don't do this every week, you visitors, but we need to all, in spirit, go into that water too and recommit ourselves and the water is open too Amen. you know it Cam <laughs> your family's all been in that water it's open and if you're here today and if what Tim teaches in a moment or what I'm saying right now makes you think yeah I need to be in that water it's going with us we're never surprised. Glad and thrilled. I love to go back home and have to order more Bibles on Amazon. I love it. 
ordered Kathy's Wednesday night during Bible study, came over here to this building where I had Wi-Fi, I went, done. <laughs> Felt good. Well, we're doing our fellowship time now. I'm going to play a song by Alvarado that's coming next week. Be sure to say hey to people. And remember, not everybody feels the same way about touching, about hugging, about loving. Right now, if you have to wave somebody, fist bump somebody, we do have a roped area for folks that don't want to co-mingle as much, but let's go see everybody and we'll come back and I'll introduce Tim. Hi, Betty, how you doing, kid? <laughs> Y'all doing all right? There he is. How you doing? Good yourself. I ain't got no boots yet. Uh, I'm still working on it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Oh, no, probably not. We'll, we'll just keep saying that, and that, that'll work. Well, you know, I, Christmas coming around. I just got this candy collar. That's right. But I don't know if he's been good in this. Oh. So. I still got a little time to work on it. Yeah? Don't touch this manly beard. It looks like Duck Dynasty, don't it? Where you going? I didn't know that was going on. How are you doing, young girl? I didn't know about the rodeo. What do you think? There's a rodeo in Ocean. Yeah, I know about the rodeo. Yeah, I know about the rodeo. Oh, good. Your sunglasses have been given to you back. Yes, thank you. I mean, I pulled my folded chair out of the car. And
we spent a good while with Tim, Terry and JR and I, we, went, we ate at our best, you've probably heard of it before, and then we came and sat up here and we talked and talked and talked, and we heard, we did, Zayden, no lie, and we, we heard stories about George Jones and Merle Haggard and Johnny Cash and Reba McIntyre and Tammy Wynette, Kenny Rogers, and uh, Trace Atkins, and Randy Travis. Now we're pretty. Yes, all these people who Tim has known for 35, 40 years. And the biggest thing I thought about with all that, I can't read, is that Tim was in the middle of all that since he was little, since he was a young pup in the music scene and cutting his own records and having success with a, a band called Pandana, wasn't it? And if you've never seen the picture, his hair come out to you. <laughs> very, very luxurious. I envy him big time. I know some of you then also envy his hair big time. But it was great. He went on to write lots of good music for the who's who of country music. But then he decided several years ago, I'm out. I'm not doing that anymore. I'm going to write songs for the Lord. And that means that I won't be performing at the opera places, the Billy Bob's of the world, I will be getting in my van and driving church to church. And sometimes I won't know where I'm going till right before it happens. He just had another gig at it, was it yesterday or later in the month? So it, it just comes up as it comes up. You talk about going out on a limb. When I read that scripture a few moments ago from Mark 10 about, are you ready? <laughs> You say you want to sit by my side, but are you going to be baptized the way I'm baptized, says Jesus? Are you going to do what I'm doing? He said, in fact, you will be, boys. But it's not going to be about sitting in my right or my left. Tim had the high life with the country music. He knows them all, and we heard really fun stories. But like I hope you all do, too, you don't dwell your whole life on the high life on success and on prestige and fame but instead you're like you know what Jesus is all I need he is enough for me I will stake my claim with the cross and the gospel and that's it and that's why we're doing what we're doing today having baptisms it's also why we bring somebody like Tim here so that we can hear someone who's been there done that and has decided to follow Jesus we're going to have him play for us and teach us, and you know, I'm going to send this love offering basket around. Some of you have been coming to see me while I stand here. Well, I'm going to send it to you all. So I'm going to start at this side because we're actually going to be the ones the treasurers today. So send it back this way. And when Earl gets it and George, let's just start to send it back this way. And we'll have to take care of it. So without any further ado, from Tennessee by way of Virginia, back in originally, Tim Menzies is back, folks. Amen. Good morning. Uh, the Lord has been changing my set list uh, over these last 15 minutes. So uh, if it looks like I don't know what I'm doing next, it's because I don't know what I'm doing next. <laughs> Would you please stand and join me on this song uh, as we acknowledge those who have made new professions of faith and what will happen here in a little while. I have decided to follow I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Though I may wander, I still will follow. Though I may wander, Decided to follow Jesus. Will you decide? 
Starting in verse 13, the king of Aaron says, Go find out where he is, speaking of Elisha, and capture him. Now that's the logic of man. <laughs> Elisha knows everything that Aaron's been doing, the king of Aaron's been doing, and now he thinks he can go catch Elisha. <laughs> we see that kind of foolishness now. So I can send men to capture him. The report came back. He, being Elisha, is in Dothan. Then the king sent his horses and chariots and a strong force to Dothan. They went by night and surrounded the city. When the servant of the man of God, so Elisha's servant, got up and went out early the next morning, an army with horses and chariots had surrounded the city. Oh, my Lord, what shall we do? The servant asked. Don't be afraid, Elisha answered. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed, O oh Lord, open his eyes so he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. So remember, when we leave this building today and we'll go down and gloriously participate in baptisms so we'll still be uh, surrounded by Christian behavior but when you turn on the news you go to the market or pump your gas and nothing makes sense there are more with us than there are with them and pray that God opens our eyes and those who we love and some we don't love <laughs> who haven't received him as Savior. <laughs> you spoke light through the dark Stars appear in space The world without a flaw Your fingerprints on it all now we got books stacked to the sky about how this universe was made they chalk it up to random chance or happenstance 
But I know that was you, part of your grand design. Not one wasted move, always right at all time. And from there up on high, nothing takes you by surprise. From the thorns to the cross, the empty tomb. That small voice on that church pew, I know that was you. Those long unanswered prayers, the detours and the curves, I could not see the plan, but looking back, I see your hand. Guiding every single step and showing me the way to walk by faith beyond myself. The strength I felt, I know that was you, part of your grand design. Not one wasted move, always right on time. And from there up on high. Nothing takes you by surprise From the thorns to the cross The empty tomb That small voice On that church pew I know that was you From there up on high, nothing takes you by surprise. From the thorns to the nails, the empty tomb. That small voice on that third pew whispered my name and said, I am the truth. I know that was you. song was from Bill Monroe and uh, if you googleize it you'll see that we don't know who wrote it uh, God's still the only one that knows everything uh, but I'm sure that whoever had the title had written the had read the divinely inspired words of the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 3 9 we are God's fellow workers you are God's <laughs> building be careful how you build for there's no foundation other than the one already laid which is Jesus Christ and all God's people see. Amen. <laughs>
preacher tell you what I do. I keep right on preaching. I'm working on a building too. I'm working on a building. Working on a building. So they let me be there. And as he woke up, he was in a lot of pain. It was very obvious. And uh, somehow during the surgery, they had bleached his hands intentionally. And the oil stains were gone. I don't know how they did. And uh, as he came to, he noticed his hands. And he stopped crying. And he kept staring at his hands and flipping them back. Or looking at his fingernails. And on the one hand, it broke my heart. On the 
other hand, it gave me a wonderful opportunity to talk to him again about the stain of sin on the soul and that the blood of Christ can bleach the soul. I dedicate this to all those who work with their hands. Every day the whistle blows, he rises from the earth. Thankful just to be alive and going home to her. Cold us clinging to his hair and feeling every pore. She counts it as an answer prayer when he comes through the door. Rosin up that fiddle bow, play it along some long and slow, like a new fresh fallen snow on Kentucky cold. Hillside in December wind, everyone's in black. Today he's going underground, but he ain't coming back. Rosin up that fiddle bow, playing along some long and slow, like a new fresh. Fallen snow on Kentucky cold. Two a.m. A mother cries. A baby boy is born. Will he wear a miner's light like all the boys before? Rosin up that fiddle Playing along so long and slow Like a new fresh fallen snow On Kentucky cold Like a new fresh fallen snow On Kentucky cold One day when that trumpet blows, he'll rise up from the earth. Because of the virus, uh, I was in Baton Rouge on uh, March 15th of 2020. We were having a three-day convention and uh, turned into a one-day convention. And the uh, sheriff called the pastor and said, if you got anybody from out of town, you better send them home. And so that included me. And so uh, I gathered up my stuff and got on the road. And my phone began ringing on my way back to Nashville of churches canceling me. And uh, it rained for weeks. And uh, I told my wife I got canceled on more dates than I had booked. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. <laughs> People were calling me if I just drove by their church. You're not coming. Yeah. Well, thank you. And so... Uh, Sometimes I'm a little rusty on things, and uh, this is one of those. Uh, this is a song about old folks that I'm doing and dedicating to Corey. Uh, 
See, that came out wrong, yeah. No, he asked me to do it. And uh, sometimes I get a little nervous about doing it because, as y'all noticed, I like looking at the congregation when I'm up here because I feel like it's kind of a conversation. And, uh, but when I'm singing this song about old folks, everybody takes me looking at them kind of personal. <laughs> and so I'm looking for the children, you know, just so we won't, we won't misunderstand things. Yeah. And uh, I do want to say uh, it's a glorious thing to have from a two-month-old to 91 in a church. Amen. That's the body of Christ. That's the way it's supposed to be. And uh, the only way the world has a chance is these babies being raised in the body of Christ. Amen. The salt and light. So this song uh, is about old folks. And I will say I are one. So. <laughs> Some days on my way home, I take Highway 44, wind up sitting out there at Old Man Beasley's store, surrounded by faded overalls, gray hair, and hands like leather. In this crazy world, if you ask me, it just don't get no better. Hanging out with old folks. Drinking coke straight from the bottle, laughing at their worn out jokes. And old stories, man, they got them. Chewing red man, jumping chairs, talking about old friends they'll see in heaven. If you need me, I'll be down the road. Hanging out with old. They say it ain't country without a dobro and a fiddle. You know that they like you when they give you what they whittled. They talk about Miss Emma, a young 82 and single, taking bets on who'll be first to put a ring on her finger, hanging out with old folks. Drinking coke straight from the bottle, laughing at their worn out jokes. And those stories, man, they got them. Chewing red man, jumping checkers, talking about old friends they'll see in heaven. If you need me, I'll be down the road. Hanging out with old folks, you never wonder what they're thinking. They say money in a mason jar Beats the heck out of a banker The chewing red man jumping checkers Talking about old friends they'll see in heaven Good Lord will it someday down the road We'll all be old folks Hanging out with old Rocking with old folks, hanging out with old folks. And Pastor Beatty is getting ready to retire from one job. Yeah, you got so much spare time on your hands and all. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we did have a wonderful visit yesterday, and uh, we had dinner. Uh, Miss Harriet and Corey and Jr. And uh, then we came over here and sat up and talked and solved all the problems of the church, all the problems of Kentucky. And when I woke up this morning, brother. It's all tangled up again. <laughs> we didn't do a good job. You didn't hold it. Colossians 1.17 says, All things hold together in Jesus Christ. 
So uh, we're just swatting around at it, I'm afraid. Uh, speaking of old folks, uh, I'd like to welcome Zeb and Joy's son with us today, uh, sitting right back here. Uh, uh, they are having their 30, 41st anniversary today. Yeah. Of I didn't want to interrupt the prayer list, Pastor, but I think we ought to add joy to the prayer list for the penance she's already paid. 41 years. They've been wonderful to me. Uh, uh, we've also had some wonderful conversations until 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning. That's one thing I didn't anticipate when the Lord called me in the full-time ministry traveling was meeting brothers and sisters in Christ uh, that I'd never met this side of heaven. And within a few minutes, I know that we're eternal brothers and sisters in the body of Christ. And what a blessing that is. And so uh, um, I've been privileged to go to Israel and I'm supposed to lead a tour, but we keep getting canceled uh, along with everything else. And uh, Miss Joy is planning on going if the Lord tarries. And so we'll get to talk over there. That leads me to another Bill Monroe song. Uh, I recorded this song, uh, Walking in Jerusalem, just like John. And the way the Lord worked it out, I thought we were late recording that second album. We kept supposed to start, supposed to start, and we didn't. And uh, I was in a hotel room in Arkansas, and the producer called and said, hey, can you record May 14th? And this was 2018. Well, May 14th of 2018 was the 70th birthday of the reestablishment of the nation of Israel. And so we recorded Walking in Jerusalem, just like John, on Israel's birthday, and I knew that we were right on time once again. Uh, we were blessed with Bill Gaither and the vocal band sang on the record, and, uh, but as y'all can see, they would have fit right here perfectly. It would have been beautiful. Like made a half moon back here and everything. Uh, but we had a budget problem. <laughs> yeah. I can't afford one of the tires on those buses. And so uh, today we have the Drennan vocal pain. Y'all up for singing? All right. Uh, most of you have heard this song, and if you haven't, either way, it's real simple. I'll sing a line in the verse. Oh, John, oh, John, oh, what did he say? And y'all sing, walking in Jerusalem just like John. I'll meet you there on the crowning day. Walking in Jerusalem just like John. Perfect. Of course, I want to be ready. 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 Lord, to walk in just like John. Jesus says in Matthew 24, be watchful and ready. Are y'all ready? Yeah. All right. Yeah, I heard that. Whoa, John, oh, John, oh, what did he say? Walk in Jerusalem just like John. I'll meet you there on the crown. Story. Walking in Jerusalem just like John. I want 
church and when I got and I got saved and started studying the Bible and longing for heaven 
And uh, one night I was watching the news, and uh, it was up what we've come to expect on the news. And, and uh, I turned it off without finishing and prayed, Lord, come quickly. And the Lord reminded me in Second Peter, by divine inspiration, the Apostle Peter wrote, the Lord's patience means salvation. And then he let me remember that I was saved in 91 and some of y'all were praying in 1990, Lord, come quickly. And I'm glad he didn't listen to you. And uh, so I try to now when I want to say only, Lord, come quickly, trust his timing because there's still a lot of people that need saving. Let it right into this song. I turned off the evening news. Pray, Lord, come back soon. Then I remember back when I was lost. Before I heard his call, before I knew the word, I was running around, hanging out with the wrong crowd. Like that time we drank till sunrise, it scares me now. Thank God he didn't come that night. Thank God he looked down with grace gave a little more time he could have gathered his children before I saw the lights thank God he didn't come that intensive care a lost soul without a prayer barely breathing but in the chapel on her knees the night nurse was praying please save her Jesus when morning came she was wide awake talking about a man in bright white clothes who touched her soul and held her hand thank god he didn't come that night thank god he looked down with grace gave a little more time he could have gathered his children before she saw the light thank god he didn't come that night. He could have come down like lightning, shaking stars out of the sky. Thank God he didn't come that night. time is right but we can't see around the bend and we don't know when the road will end I'll get to that later is a promise we can't make could be sometime tomorrow it's just one day too late if you want to say I love you, don't wait If you need to say I'm sorry, don't 
don't hesitate don't wait to call your mama if she's this side of heaven's gate don't waste another day for heaven's sake and if you have a trusted jesus don't wait Hold a grudge that's justified But that grudge can't help your heart get right Forgiveness always heals the soul and Brings back that peace the devil stole That old clock just keeps on ticking the hourglass runs out Make the most of every minute Cause all we have is now If you want to say I love you Don't wait If you need to say I'm sorry Don't hesitate Don't wait to call your mama If she's this sad of heaven's gate don't waste another day for heaven's sake if you have a trusted jesus don't wait any long he's been knocking on the door he's prepared a home in heaven for everyone who calls him alone Only God knows what tomorrow brings Don't waste another day for heaven's sake If you have a trusted Jesus Don't wait Thessalonians 4.16 that Jesus will come down and blow that last trump and those who are dead in Christ out here will rise their glorified bodies will rise to meet their spirit who's already with Jesus we know that to depart from here is be with him those glorified bodies will rise and then those who are alive in the church will rise and we will join Jesus in the cloud to live with him how long? Amen, Amen. No more knee replacements. No more cancer. No more colon surgeries. No more four-year election cycles. Amen. King Jesus. Amen. I don't take one day for granted while God walks me on his earth. If I take my last breath tonight and the good Lord takes my soul, they'll bury the soul back bones down in some old dark hole. But when Jesus stands up on that cloud, makes that trumpet sound, I'll shed that coat and tie and leave that fine box in the ground. I'm a coming up six feet. No grief gonna haunt me With good God Almighty calls from on high Throw the mountain gonna fly away Blaze the glory to the new place I've already got the key Cause he rose on day three I'm coming up six feet I'll shine in my new body Dance on the streets of gold No aches on pains, nothing blind or lame Nobody's growing old 
I'll hear heaven twice sing new notes I've never heard. I say, make sure time only imagine from God's word. Soon and very soon we'll see King Jesus split the sky. For the devil knows what happened in a blink of an eye. I'm a coming up six feet. No brain going home. Yeah. <laughs> 